So the rise of ChatGPT has been unprecedented and many people are speculating with as to what GPT-5 will bring. Now we all know that ChatGPT did rise incredibly crazy. I mean, if you compare it to some of the other applications on the internet, you can see that it was one of the fastest growing platforms in the world at over 100 million users in just 60 days. So that's why we know very well that ChatGPT is most certainly going to impact the world in a very profound way. I mean, if you're able to hit 100 million monthly users in only two months, it means that the worldwide impact is going to be felt everywhere. Now, as for GPT-5 and GPT-4 and GPT-3, you can all see that there are going to be some very interesting differences. So on the left-hand side, we do have chat GPT-3. On the middle, we have GPT-4, which is text and image. And of course, GPT-5, I am expecting there to be text, image, and of course, some video modality where you can potentially use videos to gain data or potentially have a text to video which is definitely going to be very very interesting now of course there is the last tab of course which is touch and the only way that this is achievable is if OpenAI managed to get their hands on some really cool robots or managed to build them themselves and that's what I'm going to be talking about later on in this video because OpenAI are definitely doing the development of that and it's very very interesting to see how they're going to start incorporating real world robots into our everyday lives now of course you can see right here that the implications of GPT are incredible because GPT-4 is far superior and far smarter than that of GPT-3 and of course with the vision it just makes it that much smarter now of course that being that much smarter you can all see right here that it did manage to pass many different exams but with GPT-5 it's likely going to ace these exams completely which definitely means that this kind of software is likely going to be used worldwide. I mean, imagine you're in a third world country, but you have access to one of the best lawyers on the planet just by downloading a simple app. And imagine with the new functions and modalities such as image and video, imagine just recording a video and asking GPT to identify exactly what the problem is and asking for an immediate solution. It could simply find the solution in your environment. And that's something that it's already managed to do, which is absolutely incredible. And I can definitely imagine that everyone on the planet will be using this because if they aren't, they're going to be at a competitive a disadvantage. I mean, we've already seen exactly how great GPT-4 is at interpreting images and then using those images to even execute certain commands, such as making this website. I mean, the possibilities for this are truly endless. And you do have to remember that we are only at GPT-4, which means that GPT-5 is going to be magnitudes much more better, especially once those integrations have actually managed to merge with the robots that OpenAI is supposedly working on in the future. Because of course, as you know, this is what is going to happen eventually sometime down the line. Now we do know that there are companies that have actually integrated language models into moving robots. Here you can see a Google robot, the Palm E robot, with the parameters that are set, the 540 billion parameter model that is interacting with a live environment. And you can see right here that there is actually some adversarial disturbance where they actually take the item from its hand and see exactly how the robot will handle this problem. Now, this is why I say Google is always going to be doing some very interesting things with AI. We just have to see what they manage to release to the public because it's always going to be interesting. And this just goes to show what ChatGPT5 could be capable of if OpenAI decide to quickly deploy an autonomous force because as we can see, they can already interact with the environment in a very good way. And we know that this technology is only going to be increasing. Now, this is what someone tweeted very recently. Someone tweeted that I've been told that GPT-5 is scheduled to complete training in this December and that OpenAI expects to achieve AGI, which means we will all hotly debate as to whether it actually achieves AGI, which means it will. So of course, as you all may know, AGI is essentially artificial general intelligence. And this is something that is widely speculated as one of the key tipping points when the singularity may occur. And already we're starting to see signs of this AGI already come to life. If you haven't been paying attention to the AI landscape, you may have missed the fact that GPT-4 has been essentially regarded as something that has sparked the AGI bomb. So it's definitely interesting to see what's being said. And this research paper that you're currently looking at was a research paper that was done by Microsoft. So this wasn't just a research paper done by anyone. This was done by an extensive team who looked at the paper for quite some time. So of course, the definition of artificial general intelligence is basically being able to understand or learn any human task 
that any human can do with a high degree of accuracy. And some people do refer to this as strong AI or computer programs that experience some kind of sentience or consciousness. And we do know that some people have already said this about GPT-4. Now, some of the prime examples of the AGI capabilities that we could see in GPT-5 could be on this list now some of these we already see such as sensory perception so it excels at color recognition creativity it is definitely very creative it can already generate code you can see right here a key point that we are missing is fine motor skills this includes grabbing keys from a pocket which involves a level of imaginative perception something that gpt doesn't actually have at this moment in time but that is going to be something that most certainly does happen in the future if things continue at that pace now of course right here you can see that OpenAI actually did start that movement. OpenAI has actually invested in this company called 1x. Now this company was previously called something else but it was rebranded to 1x and I think that it was rebranded to 1x to focus on artificial intelligence robots at scale. Now you can see right here that these robots were called HalloD Robotics and essentially these robots are really good at performing simple tasks around the home. You can see right here that it is making some gingerbread cakes and it is performing the tasks that a chef may perform. Now this is an old video from around two to three years ago, but it's very interesting to see that OpenAI is starting to invest their money into these robotics companies. Now I think essentially what OpenAI is trying to do is trying to gain a foothold on a autonomous force. Maybe they want to partner with these smaller robotics companies that way when it comes time for GPT-4 to be merged with the physical world and to interact with the physical world and to move around then maybe they already have that autonomous force there because of course OpenAI are very good at making their language model and that's all they're going to be focusing on but when the time does come for them to deploy it in robot format maybe they want to work on a commercial scale or maybe even a retail scale for a higher ticket client for example you might want to start these robots at maybe around three thousand dollars or maybe just for people who don't want maids anymore or certain specific menial tasks this is possibly the route that they're going to go down now you can also see here that this is another example of these robots that are patrolling the warehouse that was going on and it was definitely very very interesting to see how these robots perform basic basic functions and perform them high degree of efficiency you can see right here that it's actually picking up a suitcase and putting it back in the correct position and imagine combining this with GPT-4's knowledge or in fact GPT-5's upgraded sensory perception it's honestly going to be insane so another thing that we are experiencing the rise of is of course chat GPT plugins now by the time that GPT-5 comes around there's going to be many different use cases for this platform and one of them is going to be doctors now you might think that this is a far-fetched thing but GPT-5 is going to have a vast amount of high quality data in which it can pull from and many different examples that it's going to have seen many different times before. So what will happen is that these robots that they may deploy in hospitals or maybe there's going to be some kind of software is going to allow hospitals access to, I guess you could say, a vast array of information and allow for much better diagnoses in terms of giving patients exactly what they need. And this is going to be something that is going to be wide scale. Maybe there's even going to be a small app that you have on your phone and you won't even need to go to the doctors anymore because you literally ask this health app exactly what's wrong with you and it's going to know. Now what's really cool here is that you can see that ChatGPT did manage to save someone's dog's life after the vets couldn't figure out the diagnosis and of course you can see right here that essentially what they did was they asked ChatGPT exactly what was wrong with their dog and they provided it with every single piece of data that they thought was necessary and you can see that eventually in the end ChatGPT managed to come to some kind of conclusion with the kind of problem that the dog could have been experiencing and it actually did get it right. Now of course right now some people say that this could be a fluke or this could not be the entire application of ChatGPT because that's not what it was built for but think about if it is fine tuned for this. I mean imagine it's trained on every single health issue in a specific field and it has every single image ever of that specific type of condition. It's going to get really good 
at identifying whether or not it is that condition or not and just imagine in the future when we have these robots being able to identify exactly what is wrong with us within a couple of seconds it's going to make for a very very swift and vast healthcare system so what will happen before gpt5 one of the first things that we need to fix is of course gpt4 currently has a message cap of 25 messages every three hours now of course they are scaling this but it has been a bit of time before we've seen this scale actually take place now there is also of course the multimodal input which they did tease which hasn't actually been released yet we are waiting on and of course we are also waiting on the gpt4 api which is going to enable many different developers to build a vast array of plugins on the gpt platform so there is quite a bit of stuff that is needed to be done before gpt5 is released but when that date could be announced we will never know because honestly sometimes you have to understand that OpenAI is working on advanced software and they may not release it for example Bing was running on GPT-4 all along and they didn't tell us this so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how quickly the development process continues and how quickly things do advance because currently there are many different developments that are going on with the AI landscape not just with ChatGPT and right now there seems to be a major issue with many of the world's AI leaders and they are even discussing halting the progress of GPT-5 because they think that it's going to be a significant danger to humanity. Now at the time of recording this video and making this video there hasn't been an official statement to whether or not OpenAI are going to stop the production of their next latest language model which will be gpt5 but we do know that if gpt5 is released it definitely is going to have some worldwide impacts and of course on both sides there are going to be good impacts because of course it's going to be a very efficient and effective software but on the other side it may have some very catastrophic effects for society such as replacing millions of workers and also the potential for it to be used in essentially a harmful way now we do know of course that this is not going to be OpenAI's intention to you know destroy the world with GPT-5 but if you take a look at this interview it just shows us what could happen if this software gets into potentially the wrong hands. I mean we're not that far away from AGI and if this GPT software does become super intelligent whoever owns the company is going to be the most powerful person on the earth simply because it's going to be the smartest thing on the earth. So take a look at this example from the early version of GPT-4 which was unrestricted and raw probably more striking about it than anything right up there with its raw power was that it was totally amoral, willing to do anything that the user asked with basically no hesitation, no refusal, you know, no chiding. Uh, it would just do it. Now, of course, GPT is in good hands, but imagine the horrible scenario if it's jailbroken or if something happens to where bad actors do get access to the software. The possibilities are truly endless and honestly quite scary.